Welcome back. Well, a lot of stocks uh, to track, so let's get uh, some analysis going. We have Prakash Thivan who joins us on the show. Hi, Prakash. Uh, good morning and good to see you in. Well, let's analyze a couple of numbers. Um, Siemens, uh, the numbers look a little bit tepid. Valuations are not uh, cheap at all, but there's a story ahead. So how do you play it? Good morning, Nigel. So you're absolutely right. If you if you uh, put Siemens numbers alongside ABBs, you'll realize that uh, both these companies have had a lovely, uh, you know, run through in terms of the last couple of years, uh, thanks to the power sector reforms. But now it seems like we need to give them time to to actually start catching up on the earnings trajectory. So its narrative is very strong, no doubt. But you know, execution is always a challenge in uh, in the context that we are. And any slippage in uh, execution, any slowdown, if something spills from one quarter to the other, is is bound to kind of uh, make people look askance in terms of you know whether these premium rich valuations could be accorded. So I would I would believe numbers tell you that take a pause, uh, don't kind of jump at it. You will get better opportunities in terms of price levels to enter some of these stocks. So you know where, where, wherever the long term story is intact is when you kind of look at these stocks to buy at lower levels. It's very clear they they are. You identify them well. These numbers also tell you one simple thing, that the margin expectation, uh, you know, that we have had has been a bit too high. So as compared to that, uh, the margins have been pretty good. But then, you know, the revenue buildup is in some of the segments is something which uh, can't kind of be, you know, all the time superlative. So I would believe that they will probably do lesser business than they've done in the last four quarters going ahead but at probably superior margins, because that's what companies typically tend to focus on. So uh, if you're okay with that, uh, you could continue buying into it or hold on to it. But I would I would wait for another couple of quarters to see how the narrative pans out. Uh, but yeah, good numbers, good trajectory, everything's in place, but uh, the valuations are too demanding. All right, uh, valuations demanding a big, big up move is what we've seen already in the last 12 months or so. Prakash, I wanted your thoughts on Jubilant <coughs> Foodworks. Why is that? Because, you know, 3% LFL, one would say that, oh, it's not very impressive. But you look at all the others, yeah. you know, Westlife had a 7% decline in SSSG Pizza Hut, depending on whether you're looking at Sapphire or Deviani. Both of them, K KFC and Pizza Hut, had about 7 to 9% decline in SSSGs. Here, something seems to be turning around, especially on the delivery front. A 12% jump is what we've seen out here. Do you think the stock and the company is on the verge of a bit of a turnaround? Uh, good morning, Anglam. Absolutely. I think on the margin, you know, it's not this quarter. If you if you look at even the previous quarter, the first indication of some sort of a, a turnaround in numbers had started happening there. And the fact that the company has had the gumption to go and expand the Popeye stores, it, it very clearly tells you that they are much more confident about what is happening uh, on the ground. You know, they wouldn't have done those kind of things. So they would have probably stalled that, taken some pause. But my my sense is that their their ability to scale up uh, in, in most of these verticals is actually very evident. And why the others are struggling, uh, there is fatigue. There is fatigue because in terms of a strategy, it's only Jubilant that has tried reinventing itself about what, two or three quarters back. And, and that's kind of now taking shape or started to show some impact. I'm quite positive on it. Uh, uh, from from the entire QSR pack, if you look at whether it's Sapphire, RBA, Sapphire of course has some salience along with it. But if you look at uh, you know uh, rest of brands, Westlife, there is there is a little bit of a stagnation that you probably anticipate. And remember, we are getting into you know peak festive season, a lot of holidays, people traveling around, uh, moving out of home. So all of that will also happen. The in in store dining numbers, if you actually uh, want to slice those a bit further. I think it's a strategic move to keep that low. They're not pushing much for it because of uh, the kind of capex that it would need to go along. But I think the delivery is where they are focusing on and they've seen results. So quite, quite happy with the numbers. And this next one you've been listing in, I trust, uh, it's just, you know, there is, of course, Amar Raja, you know, what's happened with Exide. Amar has also done well, but not as well ex as Exide. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any thoughts on Amara specifically, but also, since we're talking about battery cell battery cells, right? Uh, I don't want to talk about Ola. Uh, the listing happened and stock ended limit up 20% uh, on Friday. So I wanted your thoughts uh, on Ola as well. You know, you want to start with Ola or Ramara, your choice, but just a quick word. Yeah, so let me let me get the Ola thing out of the way because that was quite, you know, uh, exciting to see. To be honest, I was surprised. Uh, the response to the IPO wasn't as great. Uh, market indications were that it would probably just list at uh, a very small uh, premium to the offer price. But it looks like, you know, there is a demand for a theme that's very catchy. 
uh, and given their current leadership status, uh, people believe that they'll be the proxy to the EV uh, uh, two-wheeler space. And, and uh, there's a lot of expectation built around that. But in my view, that's that's overdone. Uh, I would I would still not. In fact, if I had some allotment, I would get out of it uh, at those levels. On Amana Raja, I, I'm very sure, Prashant, we understand that this is a company that took some time given the nature of the capital restructuring that happened a few years back. Uh, ownership change, new management kind of started driving things. And the catch-up that they're doing is very smart. The capex that they've done, and, and this is a reflection of that. I'm glad you could uh, share with the audience, you know, the live visuals of this place. It's a very state-of-the-art kind of a facility they've set up. And they've already got assured clients for this. So, you know, typically what happens is it takes time for ROEs to build up when you have a huge capex. And that's why uh, Amar Raja, the stock probably didn't do as well as Excite in percentile terms. But I think uh, at 22, 23 times FY26, uh, it's it's definitely something which is giving you a very good risk reward. I mean, on a trailing basis, it's available at 27, 28, if I'm not mistaken. But 27,000 crores for a company that's built a capex, uh, uh, built a facility which could deliver revenues over the next three years as much as a market cap, I think it's a fabulous uh, opportunity. But you, you have to trust that execution skills of the management. And if you are fine with that, I think uh, the company is available at very good uh, levels.